Hi, good day everyone. Um, today we're going to start with our Unit 4 and also um, lectures 10.1 until 10.3. So we're going to split it into three different um, lectures and it's basically theory on, um, on the procurement process. So we're going to start with um, what balls of quantities is, how it's used um, during the procurement process, and then uh, we're going to look at um, how that is basically uh, used when doing a tender document and how that, um, that information is then uh, used to evaluate um, potential contractors or so. So um, we're basically going to look at chapters three, four, and six of um, Maritz and Sichli. So um, it's not a lot of work, chapter three being probably the bulk of the work. Um, and also a lot of the, the information in chapter three is not really that uh, relevant, um, especially the history part of it. So um, I'm going to highlight the most important um, sections for you um, during this uh, few these three lectures that we're going to that I'm going to record now. Okay, so chapter three is all about bills of quantities. Um, that it starts on page 13 of your green book, uh, so you can open there if you want to. And then um, basically it, it starts with the explanation of what bills of quantities are. And okay, I've touched on that already um, in the past. So the main objective of the bills of quantities is to, uh, to produce a tender document. Okay, so you will hear that I use bills in plural, bills of quantities, um, because uh, a tender document or a bill of quantities comprises a whole lot of different bills uh, in different sections in the different trades. For instance, it usually starts with your uh, preliminaries and general, and then it has your earthworks, and then it has your concrete, uh, masonry, waterproofing, uh, and then it's divided into your roof um, uh, uh, coverings, and then you've got your structural steel, um, carpentry and joinery, etc., etc. So it, it it's basically it just divides your project project into different trades in, to assist um, in in the procurement procurement process. So it uh, it tries to follow the logical uh, flow of um, the project um, and the different contractors that you need to actually um, produce um, uh, the product or, or the construction project. So um, you will see as we go into it, it does f have a bit of a logical flow. Obviously, um, some of the items can is intertwined with each other um, as you go along. For instance, if you've got plumbing, you have a plumbing a first fix and a second fix. So your first fix is usually your pipe work, uh, chasing in through walls and, and so forth. Um, whereas your second fix will be your um, sanitary fittings where you get your um, toilet, um, toilets being installed, your baths, your hand wash basins, etc. So um, it, in this, it, although it follows a logical flow, it doesn't follow a logical flow in exact um, exactly according to the program so um, just bear that in mind okay it shows um, everything that pertains to the cost of the project as shown in the drawings um, and prescribed in the specifications the easiest way to and the shortest way to describe a bills of quantities it's basically the drawings um, put into words and quantified into words um, so that a contractor can systematically price those items. Okay, so, um, nothing is left for assumption, um, so everything is measured. Uh, for instance, if um, if there's uh, formwork that has to be used whenever you're doing your um, concrete um, pour or so, for instance, if you've got a little bit of a chamfer that you have at the edge on the sides of your concrete beams or so, that has to be measured in 
or it has to be described in your item so that the contractor knows that how to price for that. It becomes a legal document, um, especially when doing payments um, to so that you can go back to something. What did the contractor price for? What did he have to price for? Um, did he had uh, did he um, have to include that chamfer? Was he aware of that that, that type of thing? So it's not assumed that uh, in all construction that a chamfer, for instance, would be used, but it's something that's um, described in your um, bills of quantities. Okay. It should be a simple. Um, it should be simple and described in materials in full. So you should try and keep it as simple as possible. Then the three main objectives of the bills of quantities is um, to provide adequate information comparison to others. Um, the main thing again is to compare apples with apples. Employees can determine accurate costs. Obviously, you've got as um, much information as possible in your bills of quantities, so it should be very accurate. And then it allows you valuation during the construction process, which is a very um, important thing uh, to be able to do. Um, if you only have a quote from a contractor for per square meter of a new um, construction or house construction, it is usually difficult to determine exactly what's due to the contractor because you can't measure it and compare it to what he quoted. So um, you will have a percentage maybe that you allocate to the progress of, uh, of the project. So it's not that accurate to actually um, price um, that. It also assists, which is not mentioned here, is in your cash flow projections, um, but we'll get to that later on. Okay, so the bills of quantities, these objectives are achieved by um, reflect, it reflects the nature of the work and the circumstances. So for instance, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it did, uh, or before, is if you do your measurements, you usually allow for hard rock, soft rock, um, is it clay excavations, it describes to the uh, to the contractor what he should price for and what he should allow for. So it, it in really includes all of that information. It's the interpretation of the whole project and then described uh, to the contractor. The, the, it's very important to, if you think about it, if you leave that for assumption and you have six different contractors tendering on a project, uh, for instance, it's if you assume that there's no hard rock and another contractor maybe comes in and he allows a certain percentage for hard rock or so, then it will be difficult to evaluate the tenders and actually get uh, the right um, comparison because the one included this and this one maybe included this, this one excluded this, so it becomes difficult to evaluate the tenders. Okay, it's done on a standard uh, in a standard manner, and we'll get to the syst uh, standard system later. But the, it's done in a certain uh, manner. Like I said, it becomes a legal document. It becomes part of the contract, um, so it has to be done in a certain manner. They are brief and simple. Uh, they are brief and simple to use, yet sufficient uh, to distinguish between the different classes of work. Okay, so it, uh, this is also. Um, uh, relative, brief, and simple. It becomes brief and simple as you, um, if you, as you get prof proficient in measuring on on the standard system. Okay, and then we get to uh, this point. It is done on a cert uh, in a certain standard, and there's three different uh, methods that you need to know about. Although we're going to focus most mainly on the standard system. Uh, of measurement. Uh, in South Africa, we use the SANS measurement system a lot. The engineers use this system. It's a quicker way of measuring, um, but there's a whole lot of um, rules and regulations connected to that. Uh, so you have short descriptions in your bills, which is linked to a big um, uh, specification at the back of your tenders. The British system is very similar to our standard system. Um, and you can only take note of that it's, uh, because you might uh, encounter that in future so that you as long uh, um, so that you at least know what the, um, that there is a system like that 
Okay, and then you've got the standard system of measurement work, uh, which we're going to focus on, this last one here. And it's a very specific way in how measurements are done. Okay, then the content of the bills of quantities <coughs> is very important. Um, this you should be able to interpret so that if you see a bill of quantities that you at least know where to to go and look for items or so um, although you're not going to be involved in it firsthand it will assist um, you in actually just being abreast of um, any site meeting if uh, the QS and the contractor discuss discusses something or so so you've got your bills of quantities are divided into trades okay so the trades i've spoken about already it should be uh, uh, presented uh, in accordance to the general principles so those general principles we're going to look at the layout just now um, it's very really, it's much easier if you just see it um, instead of just showing you uh, uh, talking about it so you've got your bills of quantities use um, usually consists out of your cover page your notes to tenderers, then you've got your bill one, which in um, most cases is your preliminaries, bill two is your earthworks, uh, bill three can be anything else, any other trade that's applicable. Uh, for instance, if you've got a refurbishment job, you might not necessarily have earthworks, um, but you may have shop fitting and those type of uh, trades instead of earthworks or so. Okay, if it's not a, like a green bolt. But then it it can go into different um, a whole lot of bills um, up to twenty up into the twenties or so. So then you've got your other trades, provisional sums. Uh, you should know about at least what a provisional sum is. The provisional sums is something that's allowed. There's a monetary value uh, given for a items for uh, usually items like your HVAC. Uh, your um, HVAC or if there's any like a mechanical installation or so uh, that you have to uh, that you're not the design is not done when you go out on tender it's usually done by a contractor specialist contractor who does a design and install uh, for that item so for instance you would allow a hundred thousand for your uh, air conditioning and then what the contractor should do is he should get free quotes and then those free quotes is evaluated and then the best contractor appointed according to those quotes and then it should um, be within the budget allowed also if it's over the budget then usually a variation order is signed also okay, and then you've got your summary all your bills added together then you've got your form of tender Okay, and then you've got an addenda, um, any addenda if, if for instance, um, there's any changes that was made or so. So this is more or less how this document um, basically looks and the layout of it. Then you've your content of your bills of quantities. Uh, preambles are usually included in your bills. Okay, so preambles. It's a very fancy word for basically specifications, but preambles just um, specifies um, that, um, for instance, if you've got a aluminium installation, the aluminium should be of this standard. If it's um, natural anodized um, aluminium, for instance, it should be this color. Um, it, it should have this strength. It should um, be this thickness, etc., etc., etc. Okay. On major projects, the BOQ may be divided into sections. Okay, so then basically you will have different bills for different sections. For instance, if you've got a um, large development and you've got multiple buildings on that development, then your um, building will be divided into multiple sections with each with their own trade. So each one of those uh, sections will have a, a earthworks a concrete uh, trade um, masonry trade etc and then the next section will have again your earthworks your uh, concrete work your masonry work etc etc okay okay then you note uh, it's important to note that individual trades are kept separate 
okay so that's what we've been discussing now um, already so you try not to mix up your trades uh, for instance um, something that that does happen for instance in your plumbing and uh, drainage uh, trade you might have some excavations included into that so what it basically states is you try and keep your trades together you try and group your items together so uh, if you've got pipe work um, you will try and keep your excavations for that pipe work together with your um, plumbing and um, drainage um, and then any supplementary or special preambles are added so if you have anything special that you want to add for instance if you specify a lambda board um, installation or um, uh, ceiling installation uh, you can add uh, the lambda board specifications on how to fix that lambda board to your rafters for instance or to your battens or uh, if it's suspended ceilings you can say it should be um, connected with this type of screws also okay so that is the items that you put in front of your uh, trade uh, I'll show you guys now um, how that works and then order of items are specific try and use your order of uh, items are very specific it's uh, it's just easier to to locate items if you um, think about bills of quantities going into pages up into the thousands of pages it's just easier if you know that this is more or less the order of uh, these items and it's just much easier to to search for items and also it just prevents uh, unnecessary um, misunderstandings okay then the tender enters his right into into the right column then he uh, multiplies this um, the quantity um, in the quantity column with this right column and it gives you amount in the right hand side and this is added and taken to the summary then of the final summary so yeah I'll, I'll show you guys now on on the layout okay so this is the layout um, that I've been spoken speaking about so all of your bulls will have this same layout uh, where you have your um, item number here you've got your description here then you've got your unit your quantity your rate and your amount on this side and then you have your sample supplementary preambles anything that you want to add let's see what they have added here so for instance your brickwork sizes and descriptions where sizes and descriptions are given in brick units one brick shall represent the length of a half brick of width so okay this is not just fancy um, uh, talk of basically saying a one brick wall will be a 220 millimeter wide wall okay and a half brick wall will be a 110 millimeter thick wall okay then you've got hollow walls what they've described here descriptions of hollow walls shall be deemed to include leaving every fifth fifth um, prepare uh, or purpent of uh, um, the bottom cores of the external skin open as a weep hole so basically it just make makes provision for the weep hole what i also just usually also add here is your um, binding wire that you have between your uh, hollow skins on both sides uh, every fifth layer, layer there should be a, a reinforcing connection and I think I can't remember now at the top of my head space at one meter intervals or so and then it just con continues pointing description of recess pointing to fair face brickwork shall be deemed to include square recess pointing basically um, it will not be flush um, the contractor should allow a amount for actually cleaning out the joints and making it neat okay so very contractual talk used in, in the bills of quantities okay then you get to the actual items so you usually have a, um, your heading and then you would specify whether it's top structure uh, superstructure uh, in foundations or so so the standard system prescribes how that is um, used uh, you also you group your brickwork um, in foundations 
in your superstructure and you also if it's curved walls you would um, measure those items separately so there's a whole lot of rules like that that you not really um, that you don't have to know but at least you would know that this is how the items are um, divided so you've got our first item here is non-facing um, uh, bricks so it's basically your standard stock bricks in class 2 mortar so it's your semi-strong mortar um, so you've got then you measure it in your different um, elements so piers is usually measured in cubes half brick walls in square meters one brick walls again in square meters one brick walls in circular on plan so here you can see it's circular on plan measured separately then you have um, one brick um, curbs 200 millimeter uh, millimeters high in measured in length so the main thing is what you want to do is you want to have a combination of um, my for instance here they included the height so the contractor knows how high it is and then he's given a um, a length so he can easily calculate how many layers of bricks does he need um, for this length of construction so the main thing is the contractor should have a complete picture of how he's going to measure or price how what should he allow for for um, for this um, item okay then uh, in the previous slide they just indicated that uh, then the contractor puts in his rates here that's multiplied with the quantity measured you get your amount here and that's added up and put into this um, item here if um, okay so what they've said here this is carried to the trade summary so this is carried to the end of the masonry bill so obviously there's still a lot of items that's not listed here for instance your um, reinforcing is not uh, measured here um, if there's face brickwork it's measured separately brickwork and foundations um, if there's a coating that has to be put on to the brickwork uh, also um, then your bills will usually go over a couple of pages so but what happens now is um, each page is added up here and then you've got a bill summary for this specific bill masonry there should be a summary and all of your page amounts are uh, taken over to that and then added up Okay, and then those page numbers are added up to your final summary. <clears throat> so let's see, here's your masonry. Here's the masonry bill that we had a look at. Here it says the page number that the summary of that uh, masonry bill is. And then you add that amount. Okay, and then remember your preliminaries is not a percentage anymore. You've got your measured items in, in this that uh, the contractor actually price like your health and safety it's specified you're going to be on site for this amount of time this is the complexity of the um, of the building so the contractor should price for his health and safety he's um, he's going to price for his site establishment etc same with your earthworks concrete and so forth so and then you can see all the different trades of a standard building listed here it's all added together and then you will see allow the amount of uh, 100 uh, 100,000 rand uh, for contingencies to be used as a dir uh, directed by the principal agent and um, deducted in the whole or in a part of the requirement so basically says let's allow 100,000 just for in case we didn't measure everything uh, or if uh, the client or someone wants to make a, make a change um, we can use this hundred thousand uh, rand but the contract contractor should please note that he is not entitled to this amount this amount is um, subtracted from this amount if it's not used so um, that's what the contingency is for <coughs> Okay, then what we also have here is the allow amount of 50,000 Rand for uh, contract price adjustment. So it's basically inflation um, that's used, and there's a couple of indices that's used on that. So 
um, please uh, just take note of that um, it's not a um, something that you uh, that I'm going to keep you guys busy with so again an additional amount of 50 thousand rand is allowed for this if you've got projects that's going over a couple of years uh, this amount is very important then you get your net amount measured here you add your VAT and then you get your final tendered amount which is carried to your tender form and then if it's successful then this is signed and this is the contract amount that the contractor is bound for so this is now it becomes a quote so the contractor quotes uh, the client that he will be able to do this work um, for this amount <clears throat> then we get to compilation of boqs two major knowledge areas are, are required you have your description of items which you saw there in the bill of quantities and then your computation of your quantities so a quantity surveyor should be able to um, describe an item very well so he has to be able to word it very well and then obviously he has to be able to computate or quantify that amount the following sequence is used when compiling your boq okay so measuring also known as taking off so you measure your items then you square them so what happens is if you do a measurement the measurement is usually done um, in the sequence as um, the project will be built um, so you have different um, trades um, that you measure and then you add your squaring is basically adding all of those quantities together and then abstracting that into a specific item okay so what happens is um, you measure um, your items for instance if you measure your um, foundation walls the length of it uh, so you've got your taking off you measured the foundation wall length that length can be used for both your um, brickwork in in your foundations and in your um, uh, superstructure so that amount that you you taken off there you squared that and then it's allocated or abstracted to your different um, different items so um, that is not um, that important for you guys but it's basically um, you should know that the sequence is you measure your items it can be shared between the different trades um, the length for instance that you've measured if you've measured the, um, the floor uh, square meter area for instance for tiling you can use it again for your um, um, ceilings again um, the circumference of that um, square meter that you've um, measured can be used both for your skirtings and for your cornices so you keep that items together so your squaring is basically a grouping of all of your items and you, then your abstracting is allocating that to your different items in your boq okay and then you've got your description of the items in your boq and then you edit those items okay then the measuring process itself is the following is critical important uh, in the measuring process accuracy and neatness obviously if you think uh, about it if you if there's any change to a design you should be able to go back to your measurement and only amend that section that was changed but if you did not keep track of your measurements very well it will basically necessitate you to do a total remeasurement of those items because you don't do not know where it stopped and end ended so please be aware of that it should be very methodical excellent knowledge of building science is required knowledge of the appropriate measurement systems accurate checking of dimensions on drawings you should be able to read a drawing um, you should be able to scale drawings full referencing is very important clear and unambiguous descriptions is used so um, you should be as clear as possible without an objective of maybe uh, saving a bit of 
money here and there and then withholding some information from a contractor or so um, it should be as clear as possible and as short to the point as possible okay so this is just an example of how um, the measurement work usually looks and um, I'm just going to briefly touch on this I'll, um, as we get into our uh, elemental estimation which we'll do after this September block week um, I'll, I'll have expand a little bit more on this but basically you've got a little system that you use so for instance half brick walls you measure um, and then you measure your um, length and you've got your screen wall here so you divide your brickwork into different sections so you group them uh, again so you've got half brick walls which is 110 millimeter brick walls so you've measured 12.6 uh, meters of them uh, you measured that they're 2.7 meters high and there was three of those uh, sections that was the same height okay so um, that is basically how it's measured so this little uh, item here is uh, known as a multiplier and then if there's no stripe underneath an uh, item uh, then it's multiplied with that item okay so very nice and so on so don't um, break your head about this I'm not going to test you guys on how these um, measurement um, and squaring papers actually works um, but you just need to know that um, the QS usually does a measurement like this and then only he takes the quantities, adds them together, group them together and then adds them to the bill of quantities. Obviously with uh, new measurement systems uh, it makes life much easier where you can actually take the quantities from your drawing into your bill of quantities and it, uh, it does the grouping for your um, at the um, at the back of the program so you don't really have to worry too much about this as long as you've you've grouped them together it just makes life much easier okay so yeah just make sure to uh, take note of these um, measurement papers okay the essentials of a good description this is very important for me though because this is what you're going to get involved in in each of your pro um, projects if there's a dispute or anything and the description was lacking yeah, you might get involved as principal agent uh, in it. So in accordance to the standard system, very important. Um, standard system is very clear on, for instance, if you measure um, brickwork, uh, anything, um, any opening less than 0 0.5 square meters is not deducted from your um, measurement anything above that should be deducted so for instance if you've got a small window it's not going to be deducted so you measure it over that window doors you have to subtract because it's more than 0 0.5 um, squares that uh, it amounts to type and nature first okay so you uh, describe the type and nature first so you firstly say okay we're going to look at a door uh, and then you describe okay it's going to be a hollow core wall or solid wall uh, door or whatever followed by the detail of the construction okay so and then you might add something like um, um, uh, usually uh, two um, two meter by 830 millimeter uh, door hollow core fitted with three hinges uh, to your um, aluminium sash for instance okay then you've got your item um, should be um, there shouldn't be a conflict in your items for instance if you um, describing um, a let me think of an um, a description if you for instance have a description of a door uh, you should 2 um, comma 0 3 2 by 830 13 millimeter door uh, and now suddenly you're going to measure in your quantities you're going to put in a square meter uh, there for your doors it's going to be in conflict with the actual quantity in your description so for instance you um, 
uh, you describe that you've got three of these doors and your quantity is not multiplied correctly uh, then it might it, it well it will cause a claim from the contractor so usually your doors are measured in number given you give the size you give the quality you uh, and you describe what um, type of connection it will have all relevant sizes must be clear uh, or clearly but, uh, be in indicated in the descriptions okay that i've uh, discussed already so for instance back to the doors if you described a um, the door and you've given the length and the breadth uh, then you can measure it in quantity because the contractor has uh, the length and the breadth. Obviously, you will also, um, in your description, um, give the thickness of the door also if it's a specific thickness. Otherwise, if that's not given, you will go back to your standard preambles, which uh, says any um, exterior wall, uh, door will have at least a 65 millimeter thickness also. Okay. All relevant sizes must be indicated in this description. Okay. All special requirements should be indicated. If there's anything special about these items, for instance, if you've got a special fire door, you should say what fire rating it should have, fire rating of an hour, two hours, hour and a half or so. Uh, work or two different trades shall be um, Work of two different trades shall not be combined. So you do not combine your different trades together. Separate um, separation of items shall uh, not be excessive. Okay, so uh, you're not going to um, describe a this construction of your um, of a steel gate. Now suddenly, with each little uh, steel section uh, measured out in length. Uh, together uh, or into different sections uh, that's just going to be too excessive uh, and the contractor won't be able to uh, to actually understand what's what needs to happen so we, if, if you have a gate um, a special um, ad hoc um, manufactured gate you will have the description usually linked with your drawing or so and you give the size you might even give the weight of it and then the contractor should price that as a unit Okay, then allowances um, information is not always available when the BOQ is compiled. Compi uh, compiled. Monetary allowances are in the usually comes in the forms of your contingencies, budgetary allowances, uh, prime cost sums. Your prime cost sums. Um, okay, I've explained the provisional sums earlier, but your prime cost sums is basically what is the basic cost of these items. So your prime cost um, items will be. Um, <clears throat> what would a standard hollow core door um, from Swartland or whoever actually cost? Okay, so you have that cost, and then you allow an item underneath that for the contractor to, to uh, put up a markup or the installation cost, etc. Okay, then something, this is just a um, side note that I've uh, added here, the relationship between the bills of quantities, quantities and the elemental estimate, we're still going to discuss. Uh, so I'll um, discuss this with you. I actually wanted to do, uh, in the past, um, we would have been busy with the elemental estimate now at this stage, but um, this might actually work very well because um, we've seen how the bill of quantities actually looks. But now, um, once we've done this little section in this block week in September, we can actually take a bill of quantities and link that to our elemental estimate. So uh, I just wanted to, to make you aware of that. Okay, thanks. This is our lecture 10.1. So um, yeah, please feel free to send any questions or queries to me if you have. Keep well, bye.